But astronomy, that's, um, it's one of the oldest sciences. You can look back and, and see what people have uh, struggled to understand hundreds or thousands of years ago. There's also this uh, incredible uh, notion of tomorrow, of what will be discovered tomorrow, where we might go tomorrow. One of the things I strive for in my paintings is this sense of the inf infinite. Leonardo da Vinci, he looked at art very scientifically, and his very famous comment is that art is the true daughter of science. Anything that you do creatively, I think the more you can become intimate with it, the more you can delve into it, almost like a scientific approach. It's, it's to your advantage. I often think about in creating a painting, there's sort of different levels that you begin. There's this sort of general view of the thing. But as the days go by, you, you go down to different lower levels of scrutiny and, and once you establish the composition of the piece and the overall tone of it, you kind of reach down to lower levels of understanding what it is you're painting. You, you become more um, one with the, with the subject, you become uh, better informed about the subject. One of the things that has been a useful tool for me over the years is, is using models and also drawing from life. To actually have that leaf in front of you and to be able to see the way the light plays on it and maybe part of it is even handling that leaf. You know, you, you feel the crunch, you, all of those sensorial things go into your painting. Um, that's part of the, the beauty about painting outside, you know, if it's windy or if it's cold. Those, those senses, those, everything that's happening to you actually is, is transposed into the painting. That's something that a photograph uh, is le least likely to, uh, to convey. One of the things that I've been uh, involved in for, uh, since I was a child was uh, sky watching or astronomy. I think growing up in the space race had a great influence on me. I spent a lot of time uh, looking through telescopes and appreciating nature at that, at that level. It's a very humbling experience, I mean, to think about the distances of these objects, you know, when you're looking at, at planets that might be millions of miles, or if you're looking at, at uh, other stars or galaxies, you know, they might be millions of light years. When I paint a night sky, I'll try to be accurate in terms of the positions of stars, so someone looking at the picture might recognize a constellation or or the position of the, of the moon relative to a planet. But at the same time, I've become more aware that there's this connection between the, the large and the small. And for example, when you, you look at the spiral of a snail and then the spiral of a, of a huge galaxy, there's, it's almost as if nature is, is speaking to you. It's showing you the, that there's a, a continued harmony throughout looking at the stars and the macrocosm is to think about the microcosm. You can view a universe within a drop of water. Aside from being an incredibly beautiful visual experience, there is this um, cerebral thing, the struggle to understand who we are and where we are, where we live, what, you know, how, how big it is, how small it is, how old it is. All those questions are something that I, I wish that I could inspire more people to partake in. I mean, that's part of what I hope my art will do. 